Thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. This is another episode in the American Made Red Dot series. So this time we're focusing on the Trigicon MRO HD and a little bit about the magnifier, but not the magnifier specifically. There's been some confusion about the American Red Dot series. Is it some form of nationalism? And that's by no means the case. It's just a gee whiz question. It's a question about what can we here in the domestic continental United States acquire that's American manufactured for Red Dots. And um, because so many of the Red Dots are either, you know, from foreign entities, whether it's Sweden with Aimpoint or Hollow Sun from China, etc. And those are very excellent optics, by the way. But when we started looking at the American market, we're like, what's really made here? And it's been very unclear what's manufactured completely here in the U.S. and what's assembled here in the U.S. We landed up going with the delineation of anything that's been assembled here in the U.S. Because it's very unclear but from one manufacturer to another when they say made in the U.S.A., assembled in the U.S.A., does made in the USA to one manufacturer mean assembled, etc.? So we're going with assembled. Now, Trigicon does state that the, the MRO HD is made here in the United States. So it's a good candidate for this series. Um, it does come with an American tax, however. It's a very expensive optic. This red dot here, the Trigicon MRO HD, comes in at just under $700, the red dot by itself with a mount. If you add the magnifier, you're just under $1,000. Um, and you pretty much want to go with the Trigicon magnifier with the Trigicon MRO HD because of bore offset height issues with their mount. Trying to mount a third party magnifier behind the HD is a little weird and wonky to line up properly. So if you're a magnifier type person, we'd suggest you go with the entire package. Now, uh, the original Trigicon MRO came out, what, 2016? And there were some issues with it. Um, it had a really significant blue hue to the lens. Some people said that it added some form of fishbowl or magnification when they were looking through it, which is exactly the opposite of what you want from a red dot. And that's why here in 2020, maybe it was 2019, I'm not sure at this point, that the HD was meant to fix and clarify that issue pun may be intended. The blue hue is gone, and I don't see any aberration or strangeness looking through the lens. It does look like a clear pane of glass. Now, that said, um, contributor to the channel, Russell Fagan, Sinister Rifleman, tried to use the original Trigicon MRO back in 2016, and all the way up till now, he's doing a review or helping with the review of this Trigicon MRO HD in 2020. Uh, this particular setup here, both the optic and the magnifier, were purchased entirely by InRange with InRange funds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut over to Fagan, who used both the original Trigicon MRO in 2016, and he talks about the progression of using this one uh, up until 2020 in the uh, HD format. And then after that, you're going to come back to me because I'm going to get you some footage through the optic itself. I'm going to walk you through the zeroing process, some discussion about the brightness settings, etc., some of the intricacies of this particular optic, and then I'm going to give you my conclusion. I first tried the MRO when it came out in 2016. The idea of a red dot sight that was not much larger than an Aimpoint Micro, but 30 to 40% cheaper, was quite appealing. There were, however, two major deficiencies with these sights. The first was that it actually had a slightly magnified view, which was fine on close range paper targets like this, as the cross eye effect wasn't that great, but shooting at targets at 50 yards and further made me go cross eyed and where I perceived the dot as being wasn't actually where the point of impact was. To make hits with the MRO at these distances, I would actually have to squint or close my non-dominant eye. This is not something I've ever had to do with any other red dot that had truly zero magnification. This includes the cheapest Vortex or Hollow Sun red dots made in China, all the way up to the standard Aimpoint T2 Micro. Having to close one eye to make good hits defeats the purpose of having a red dot in my opinion, and this was the primary reason why I got rid of the MROs that I owned during this period. The second major deficiency is that the lens itself had a significant blue tint to it. In and of itself, this wouldn't be distracting if I did not have to close one eye to make hits outside of CQB distances. With the blue tint, it made it more difficult to see and perceive targets at distance. The further targets on this stage outside of 100 yards became much more difficult as a result. Between the slight magnification that made me go cross-eyed and the blue tint, I decided to sell all of the MROs that I owned during 2016. I've heard that later generations of the standard MRO dealt with these problems to varying degrees. However, I was not interested in trying the MRO again until I got to look through the MRO HD at SHOT Show 2020. 
in 2020, we purchased an MRO HD for our American-made Red Dot series along with a Trigicon 3 power magnifier. Trigicon advertises that the MRO HD is optimized for use with the magnifier and has a re-engineered objective lens to produce a refined 2MOA center dot. The MRO HD has settings that allow for the use of the 2MOA dot by itself or have it be surrounded by a 68 MOA segmented circle. I will say up front that the MRO HD is a big improvement over the standard MRO I used four years ago. The blue tint is gone and there isn't any discernible magnification that you can see looking through the site like you could with the earlier MRO. These videos I'm narrating over are occurring in rough sequential order to the matches I shot using the MRO HD. Almost all of my match footage is using the 2 MOA dot with the 68 MOA segmented circle. Something to keep in mind when using the segmented circle is that while it is much faster to acquire targets like I am on this close quarters portion here, it drops the battery life down from two and a half years for the dot only to only 75 days. So if you're leaving your MRO set on that segmented circle setting, you need to be much more conscious about changing your batteries out about every two months. On the long range portions of the stages, you'll see me swing the magnifier into place. Under magnification, the center dot is concentric and clear. It is just as good as the Aimpoint T2 with Aimpoint 3 power magnifier that I also own. This match was the first time I got a feeling that something might be a bit off with the MRO. You'll recognize these ranges from my evaluations of the Romeo 4T and Romeo 8T. The targets are always in relatively the same locations at the same distances. So when I can't make hits easily from some of these positions, to make hits I'm wondering on the stage, what's going I end up wrong. having to hold two full target widths to the right at 300 yards, which is well outside what the wind values actually were on this stage. I checked the zero before attending this next match and found nothing wrong with the sight. It was still perfectly zeroed at 50 yards. On this stage, I don't have any trouble hitting the mini Ipsic targets at 150 yards. These other targets across on the other side of the range here are full-size Ipsic targets at about 100 yards. This sequence repeats two more times on this stage, and I don't feel anything off about using the MRO and the magnifier during this course of fire. This next stage is only at 50 yards, so I don't use the magnifier at all, despite it being limited round count in the sense that magazines are limited to six rounds a piece only. I am shooting with both eyes open, something that would have been impossible for me with the earlier generation of MROs I had previously used. There's no obvious magnification distortion with the MRO HD. What I am seeing slightly though, looking through the optic on this stage, is a red artifact that is apparently the emitter board showing up in the lens. This apparently can happen when you're looking into the sun under various lighting conditions. I won't say that it makes the sight unusable, but it is mildly distracting. Nonetheless, the sight doesn't hold me back from going one for one on all the targets required on the stage and not needing any makeup shots. This next stage is going to require that I shoot off both my left and right shoulders. And this is where I have the strangest experience using the MRO. Off of my left shoulder, looking through the optic is perfectly clear. And I don't really have any trouble hitting the targets off of that shoulder. But when I switch to my right shoulder, my vision is semi-blurred. Now my vision is corrected. My left eye is negative two and my right eye is negative 175. So my vision out of my right eye is actually better. But something about looking through the MRO out of my right eye makes it a bit more distorted than looking out of it through my left eye. This isn't something I've had happen with any of the other red dots that I use or any of the other ones that I've reviewed in this series. After this match, I handed off the MRO and its accompanying magnifier to Carl for his input. Carl has better uncorrected vision than I do, so we wanted to see if eyesight and prescription played a role in the strange things I had happening using the MRO, both the shift in hits at distance and the distortion out of my right eye on this stage. My verdict on the MRO is that it seems to be serviceable and is certainly an improvement over the MRO I used four years ago in 2016, but let's see what Carl has to say about it. So the Trigicon MRO HD is zeroable with two flush dials, one on the top, one on the right. Top is for elevation, side is for windage. They do have hash marks on the scope 
and you have to use a screwdriver or a tool of some sort to do that. I'm using an 1836 Patterson tool for this, but once you put that in there, a coin would work or an edge of a cartridge head, but as you turn it, it's supposed to click. I'm telling you, the clicks are there, but they're very soft. They're so soft, in fact, that it's almost not a click. There's clicks. Technically, by the definition, it does click. I find that very dubious. Same thing on the windage. Additionally, what's is interesting is on the side here, or actually underneath the elevation knob, it shows you that counterclockwise is to raise your impact up. But when you're looking from behind the optic, up almost means for the brightness knob, which is above this, which is kind of a user interface error in my opinion, because up is not always up on the brightness knob, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Once you're bottomed out all the way counterclockwise, you actually turn the knob the opposite of what says up on the rear, which is actually for the elevation dial, to go brightness. So we're gonna go from night vision to the first setting of visible circle dot, and then we're gonna keep going. And this is brightness goes up when you go clockwise with the circle dot. So we're at three, four, five, and six, which is the brightest setting for the circle dot. Then we go to here, and then it turns out that we are now at off, because now we're between the settings between circle dot and red dot. And then as we go here, we're at the brightest setting of the actual red dot. Six, five, four, three, two, and off, right there. So if you are starting from the bottomed out of the clockwise setting, then guess what? If you're going this way for the dot, this is up for brightness until you get to the off position, and then this is down for the brightness on the circle dot. Does that really matter? No, it doesn't, but the dial acts differently depending on the situation, and the fact that it says up on the rear of the optic, which is really meant for the elevation dial, is confusing with the actual dot brightness setting. Like I said, a user interface error, but kind of strange. So I've got a very complex lens set up here so I can film through the Trigicon MRO for you to get what the reticle looks like on a mini Ipsic steel at about 50 yards. I'm going to skip the night vision modes because we're not going to see them on camera. But as we go clockwise with the setting starting with circle dot, we're going to start from the lowest to the brightest. So this is three, barely visible, four, which is still close to barely visible, five, which appears to be the setting we'd want here in the Arizona bright sun. And if we go to six, we're gonna bloom out. I understand that. And that's the brightest setting that we can get out of the Trigicon MRO. The circle dot absolutely deprecates the battery life of this optic dramatically, but it's also the cleanest reticle in this optic, and we'll get to that more in a minute. Once we go one more click, we're gonna be off. Now, what's weird is turning clockwise for the circle dot brightens it, but turning clockwise for the red dot diminishes it. So the next clockwise click of six is the brightest red dot by itself. Then if I go one more click clockwise, it goes down to five, four, three, and now we can't see it anymore. Pretty much the same as what we saw the other way. But what I wanna talk about here is that if I bring the red dot up to the right setting, maybe right about there, I think that shows up on camera, um, you can absolutely see the circuit board of the optic behind the dot. So if you look real closely right now, there is a ghost-like circle around the red dot. So if you're gonna use this optic as just a red dot, you are still gonna get that circle dot, at least from the, the filament of the circuit board visible in your field of view, regardless of what you do. Now, lighting conditions, sun position, etc., apply, but the reality is you can't get away from it. And it's one of those things that like, when you were at the mall and there'd be like, can you blur your eyes to see the ship? Eventually, once you see the ship, you can never not see the ship. And I can tell you that I can never not see the circuit board now in the Trigicon uh, MRO HD when I'm on the dot setting. Additionally, when you're in circle dot, of course the circuit board goes away because, guess what, it, you don't need that anymore because the, the filament is all now illuminated. So all of that ghost-like filament that was there for the red dot is now illuminated, so therefore it is no longer ghost-like. However, there is a filament that goes from the essentially the line on the left, all the way to the red dot in the middle. And that's what illuminates the red dot itself in the center of the 65 MOA dot. And it's not particularly clear here, but in the right conditions as well, you get like a comet-like tail to the left of the dot. So the dot, this is blooming, I'm doing that on purpose. The dot blooms to the left at 10 o'clock, and in the right lighting conditions it blooms even if, or I should say bleeds, to the left like a comet through that filament, whether you're using the reticle as a 65 MOA circle dot or as just a red dot. 
So as you saw in Fagan's previous content in this particular video, um, he had some issues with it. He, he saw what he saw, he called it distortion. I don't think what he saw was distortion. I think what he was seeing was the actual filament of the reticle um, in the optic and some of that comet type tail that goes to the 10 o'clock of the red dot, whether using the circle dot or not. His eyes, as he said, are corrected and aren't optimal. And what I think I'm seeing is what he is describing as distortion. Um, so, but he gave it to me because he wanted me to use it and go through a match with it so I could give you my perception on it because he didn't want to come to the table with a conclusion that was unfair. And uh, so I decided to put it on this Robinson Arms XCRM in 308. This is a phenomenal rifle, by the way. Love this rifle. It will definitely be on the channel more. It really is excellent. And I was getting it ready for our uh, COVID safe two gun action challenge match with reduced attendance later this month. So I had to take it out to zero it. I put it all on the gun, started doing the zeroing and it wasn't very long at all that I started seeing the issues that I think he was describing as distortion. I started seeing the comet tail to the left of the red dot. I could see the actual filament of the circuit board in the optic regardless of whether I was in 65 MOA dot or not. And even though I got it zeroed and we had no issues with parallax whatsoever, as you saw earlier in the video, Reality is, right then and there, at the price point for what this optic is, at um, $700 for the red dot, $1,000 for the entire configuration with magnifier, I just stopped. I'm not going to use this at the match. I don't need to use it further. Um, those issues alone are a no-go, no recommend for, for me, at least for you in the audience. If you find that Trichicon MRO HD suits your needs and it's something you want to use because you like the, let's say, the multiple reticle settings or there's something about it that applies to you specifically, go for it. But at $1,000 for these two together, um, I'm going to leave the magnifier off of that. For $700 for this by itself, considering the other options we have on the market, particularly some of the ones we've seen from SIG that have been absolutely phenomenal for a much lower price, I'm going to have an absolute, uh, I'm going to have a hard stop on the Trigicon MRO HD. And uh, no offense to Trigicon, but I cannot recommend this red dot. Guys, thank you for watching this uh, video here on InRange TV. As I said earlier, we are a completely viewer-supported project. Um, it's only viewer support that keeps InRange alive, and it allows us to do those kinds of honest, legitimate reviews like this one. If you already are one, thank you. If you'd like to consider it, please do. You can find us at patreon.com slash InRange TV. Uh, if you can't, I totally get it. Just subscribe to one of the multiple distribution points. InRange is distributed amongst multiple platforms, not just YouTube. You can find them all at inrange.tv slash watch. Thanks for watching, and even more importantly, share with your friends.